What is up, crew? I am tired. My blood sugars are high. But you know what? This episode needed to be made, and uh, it's an important one. So I'm going to teach you about how I identified which tools I needed to add to my diabetes tool belt and how you can do the same thing to build up that necessary skill set to not only survive with diabetes, but ultimately to thrive with your diabetes. So let's get into today's episode. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. Oh my goodness. All right. As you can tell, we are back sort of in the studio. Studio is not complete. Uh, there's no sound panels behind me. We got the mic and the camera set up and, you know, cardboard boxes, random wall art, all sorts of stuff uh, because we moved in and we're officially moved into our house. Uh, but now becomes the fun part of unpacking and organizing and cleaning and uh, it's just been chaotic and yes, it is actually the middle of the night right now. Uh, it's been a wild ride. Uh, but just uh, a lot going on <laughs> into this process of moving. Lots and lots of lessons being learned. Can't wait to share all that with you guys. But uh, good news is Little Brooklyn has been fantastic through this entire process uh, for the most part. Right? It is the middle of the night. I did just put her back down to sleep. But uh, this whole process, my blood sugars have been, for the most part, cruising pretty well. But right now, sitting a little bit high through uh, human error. I made a mistake with dinner and it led into a a faulty sight change. Now here I am trying to catch up with my blood sugars. But like we said on previous episode past where we have the 5% rule, this counts into that 5%. And uh, you know what? It was an oopsie and we move on. So uh, with that being said, going to go ahead and jump into the stories for today. So we are largely moved in. We had an incredible day yesterday where we had family and friends show up and just really gather together uh, to complete some tasks and uh, help us get moved in, get the boxes all unpacked and uh, and to really clean up. It was fantastic. But all that being said, we still don't have a mirror. And so yeah, I haven't shaved in a week because I didn't want to screw anything up. So we got some interesting living situations, but we're getting closer. And it's been an amazing experience being closer to family. In fact, the dinner we went to that shot my blood sugars up a little higher than I would have liked was actually with my family. Uh, spontaneous, they texted us like 10 minutes before and they're like, hey, we're just randomly going to do a family barbecue for Memorial Day. You want to come over? And I was like, all right, let's do it. You know, we, my wife and I chatted. I'm like, all right, we're going to just try to make this work with Brooklyn's nap schedule and Matt's site change and all this crazy stuff. And it's stuff like that, that, you know, ultimately over the years, getting diabetes under control has allowed me to do, right? Say yes to spontaneous things. And to me, that is so powerful because I used to hold back in every sense of life uh, to where my quality of life was very poor. You know, I've restricted myself with food. I restricted travel. I restricted activities and family events. And it was a sad way of living. You know, and my blood sugars were still not perfect <laughs> and they, they will never be perfect right uh, but through this moving process being able to say yes to things and recognizing that being able to say yes to the spontaneity because the blood sugar is cooperating right is due to me putting the work in years and years past and, and just really reaping the benefits there so uh if you haven't experienced that yet i want you to know there is hope there is a way you can live your life with diabetes and not be held back, right? Uh, but in that process, today was also the day that I was going to unpack uh, a bit of the nostalgia <laughs> from my parents' house. Uh, I had actually been storing things. I didn't even realize how much it was uh, for like the last decade, you know, since I, I moved out, out of high school, just kind of left some stuff in their attic, left some stuff in a closet here and there. and. I was like, all right, I should probably go back and pick up like my letterman's jacket and old yearbooks and all that kinds of stuff, right? Um, so I, I organized a time with my family to go over there. And I promise this has to do with blood sugars. We'll get to that, right? But uh, I organized a time to go over and we made a deal to get all of my stuff out in one foul swoop. Like, just get it done, right? So my dad, you know, got up into the attic and starts passing me stuff down. And we're like, you know, there's going to be like three or four boxes maybe, right? Uh, 
an hour later <laughs> and multiple carfuls later, we find out that Matt used to be a bit of a pack rat, right? And apparently I have a ton of crap that's been just sitting there for a decade. And uh, it's time for me to go through it. I had two choices. One choice was throw everything away because I haven't seen it in a decade and let's just start fresh, right? Like, let's just forget this even existed. Maybe give it to charity. I don't know, like whatever's in there. Uh, and the second option, which is what I went with was Let's bring it over to the house. Let's sift through it. I'm going to have to go through these things and see what's useful, what's not, what I can donate, what's actually trash, right? And then move on from there. Yes, it's extra work, but I think it'll be worth it because I do remember there was a purpose for some of these things being stored, right? And, uh, you know, we go through the entire process of getting all that crap over to my house, right? And we put it in the garage. And to give you a visual, we've got a two car garage and my stuff alone probably took up a quarter of the garage, like stacked probably four feet tall. It was ridiculous. And so that's just a bit of a nightmare <laughs> to dive into. But as we were, uh, you know, discovering some nostalgic items from high school, from elementary school, some stuff my parents saved when I was in like kindergarten, right? It was, it was fun. It was a fun thing to go through. Uh, you know, I've got like 20 pounds of Legos from when I was a kid. Legos were by far my favorite thing to do. But what I also noticed uh, is that, you know, the time that this is taking, like this, this better be worth it. It shouldn't just be for nostalgia, even though that is fun. Like, I hope there's some useful stuff in here. All this work being put in, this effort being put forth, like there's other things that I could also be doing, you know, unpacking our actual stuff that we have been using. Uh, but as I'm going through it, I found this box towards the back where there was actually an entire box, uh, multiple boxes actually, filled with power tools. And at this point, we've been moving a couple times a year in some cases, my wife and I, uh, really just living the nomad lifestyle. I think we counted and um, in the last like three years, I think we've moved around seven times. <laughs> it was absolutely insane when we calculated everything. So we haven't held on to a lot, almost living kind of a minimalist lifestyle. So as a result, the only power tool I had was uh, a power drill you know, for like screwing things into the wall, like picture frames. And so I find multiple boxes of like legitimate power tools, like, you know, reciprocating saws and um, hammers and screws and all sorts of fun stuff, right? Like everything I could ever need. And I had completely forgotten that my grandpa, probably 15 years ago, maybe 12, I don't know, long time ago, had actually kind of donated these to me and to get me started on my tool set. And because I was moving around so much, I never took them with me. I just left them at my parents' house. So discovering all these new tools that I was able to uh, really just put to immediate work, you know, with moving in, we're hanging stuff on the walls, I'm fixing stuff in the garage, immediately was able to pick up those tools and put them to good use. And discovering those was only possible because I made the decision to put the work in and just sift through all this crap right? <laughs> and this is where it ties in. I promised you I would. Just like with diabetes, right? You're diagnosed, you're going through life with diabetes, just trying to figure it out. You're going through all this crap. Like there's just the low blood sugars that feel like something that no one should ever have to deal with, right? There's the high blood sugars, which like I said, currently dealing with, it's not fun. Got kind of a dry mouth. That's why I keep swallowing. <laughs> uh, we've got the unpredictable blood sugars, the times that blood sugars get in the way of getting in your plans. And you deal with a lot of crap, right? Just like I was going through all this extra crap <laughs> that I definitely did not need to hold on to for an entire decade. And uh, while you're sifting through it, you're going, is this really worth the effort? Like, why am I putting so much time into this disease that I didn't ask for in the first place? First of all, why don't I just trash it? Like, who cares if my blood sugars aren't great? You know, I just, I'll have the cake and not dose for it. Whatever, it's not that big of a deal, right? Like, is it really that worth it for me to put the effort in to lower my A1C and improve my time and range like all my doctors are telling me and, you know, telling me I'm gonna like die or lose a leg if I don't do it? But then you think about it, you really think about it, like this took me years to actually think through, but it really is worth it, right? if you're able to make that forward progress, build momentum, and uh, through that process of putting the work in, of sifting through the crap, there's a really good chance you're gonna find something along that path, you're gonna discover something where a light bulb is gonna go off in your head. And you're gonna go, oh my gosh, that's why they told me to pre-bolus. 
That's how you count carbs. Oh, that is what net carbs versus total carbs is. Again, it's other epiphanies like I did. Whoa, different types of exercise impact blood sugars differently. Holy cow. And it's these moments while you're putting in the effort, right? Putting in the work because it does take work to figure out your diabetes. Really and truly anything worthwhile in life is going to take effort of some kind, right? Whether it's effort to make the money to buy the thing or your time directly, or maybe it's your physical labor. Like it's going to take effort to see results. You don't just show up at the gym on day one, you have a six pack, right? You have to put effort in. So similarly, as you're putting effort into your diabetes management, you know, after accepting it and starting to research and trial and error, like put the effort in, you're likely to discover these moments where you're, the puzzle pieces are gonna click. You know, you're gonna have this epiphany, this aha moment of like, ah, oh, it makes sense. That is what time and range means. That is how I lower my A1C. And these different pieces are gonna start adding themselves to your diabetes tool belt, right? And so similarly, as I discovered these power tools among this mess, like, <laughs> Again, it was ridiculous. I don't know how I accumulated that much stuff, especially comparing to me now where I just don't have a lot of things, right? Because we've been moving around so much. Um, it was crazy. But then discovering actual useful items that could be put to use immediately because we were hanging stuff up in the house and like actually using power tools. Uh, it was like, oh my gosh, this couldn't have come at a more perfect time, right? And there's just power tools that magically appeared. And you know, with diabetes, if you're struggling, if you're having frustrations with your blood sugars and feeling like there's just no true patterns, you think there's no hope to have stable blood sugars, it's not that you're not working hard enough. Sometimes you are working hard, you're just not doing the right kind of work, right? You're not uh, following the right strategies. And sometimes that in and of itself takes the right time or takes a lot of time to discover the right paths, right? Uh, you may have been following a completely different method or protocol for your diabetes. Maybe this is the first video of mine that you've seen. It's not your fault for not finding me earlier, right? You've just been on different paths, trying to find those correct tools, trying to discover the tools to add to your diabetes tool belt. And now that you're here, you can search through the literal hundreds of videos that I've put out on YouTube, the podcast episodes, the Instagram posts, the TikToks, the Facebook group, the community we have, all of that is free. So now you can go dive into that and start having those epiphanies faster and faster, adding them to your tool belt so you can get other things done in life. Instead of being focused on why aren't my blood sugars working, you can set them to the side because they are working and then go to enjoy the rest of your life. Does that make sense? You know what I want you to do? If you're watching on YouTube, uh, drop the word tools in the comments below. So I know this is making sense. If you can build your tool set for your diabetes, then you can have a life that seemed unreachable in the past. And the only way to do that is to put the effort in, the work to find and discover those tools in the first place, which is going to be kind of hidden among the crap right? There's not going to be this perfect, uh, I tried on day one with my blood sugars and I fixed everything. No, that doesn't happen. That doesn't even happen in our programs. <laughs> I want to make that clear. Like I coach other type ones uh, in order to accomplish these stable and predictable blood sugars, right? We talk about the 80-20 blood sugar formula. And that was my discovery with my blood sugars where one day it clicked. Oh my gosh, I understand blood sugars now, right? And I just dove down that path. I obsessed over it. And I started picking up these new strategies. And I teach that to my clients. And yet still, after years of perfecting that formula, it's not gonna be an overnight thing. There is still effort that is required in order to accomplish results, right? There is no um, overnight fix. You know, there's a fast pass, right? Which is what working with us looks like. Uh, you can do it on your own, but it will take a lot more time as it did me. It took me years of working on diabetes every single day. But if you want it bad enough, if you're willing to put that time, energy, and effort into your diabetes, I guarantee you that things will stick out. You will identify patterns. You will have those epiphanies, those aha moments where you'll be able to add new tools to your diabetes, diabetes tool belt. And that's what I want for you. That is why I'm making a podcast episode in the middle of the night. 
<laughs> with cardboard in the window because we haven't found blinds yet. <laughs> I wanted to jump on here and share this message of hope with you that it doesn't mean that you're never going to figure it out if you haven't gotten it just yet. It could be right around the corner, but it might just be a slight different path where it, maybe you were searching the wrong pile of crap. Now you move over to the other side of the garage, you move some stuff out of the way and wah, power tools. I need those. This is fantastic. You know, you're going to discover uh, how carb counting differs when there's fiber, right? Uh, how your meal dose might differ because there's proteins and fats in large amounts, right? These things are going to stand out to you as you put the work in, but that's not just going to show up in your life. You're not just going to wake up one day after never trying to fix your diabetes and go, oh, that is how everything works, right? It doesn't work that way. And so as you're trying to discover things and, and sift through all that crap with your diabetes, one, I want you to know you're not alone in this. We are all going through this with you. Uh, the crap does not end. It just gets a bit easier to sift through, right? I'm still experiencing high blood sugars. And this happens every once in a while, right? In fact, I've, I've been doing this recently just to give you guys an idea of what is possible because nobody showed me this when I was first diagnosed. In fact, uh, no one that I know of is showing this. And I don't know if it's just uncommon or if nobody wants to talk about it, but these are my blood sugars from this last week, okay? Um, always keep them around the 90s. I think it says 95% for this week. This is what's possible when you put the work in and discover those tools because you can use those tools in different areas of life. We've been moving this last week. It's been absolutely chaotic. Well, we've been moving for multiple weeks on end, <laughs> but we finally moved into our house uh, and that's been a lot of physical activity, right? And I'm still trying to work and not sleeping well and being a new parent and all these things. But when you have the tools, you're able to apply those to the correct situations and have 95% time and range for an entire week instead of letting life crush that time and range and drag you down. Uh, because at that point, which I have lived through before, at that point, diabetes becomes a lot more of a burden when the blood sugars aren't cooperating, right? And I want that for you. So uh, I wanted to share this message with you and uh, let you know that yes, it might feel like you're sifting through a lot of crap and you're wasting your time. But I assure you, if you stick with it, you will eventually find those epiphany moments, those discoveries of the tools that can help you and of course, you can fast track that by finding somebody who has already sifted through the crap and can teach you those shortcuts, right? It's not going to be overnight. And I want to set that expectation absolutely clear. There is no such thing as an overnight fix. It's not going to happen. But you find the right guide, the right coach, the right mentor to teach you those shortcuts. It's going to happen a lot faster. Instead of years, it might be months or even weeks. All right. So uh, I want to share that message with you guys today. Well, tonight for me, but probably today for you. Hopefully it was helpful. And uh, next time when you see me, hopefully I'm going to have some more of a studio set up. And uh, I'm, I'm going to guess not having cardboard in the window, but we'll see what moving in has to do for us. And uh, what it looks for, and I'll, I'll have to share a full house tour with you guys as well and, and get into that later. Now, if you feel like you've been sifting through the, the diabetes crap for what seems like forever and you're looking for that fast pass, right? The, the guided shortcut to get to those discoveries and build out your diabetes tool belt. Great news is that we actually do periodically open up the doors to our program and teach what is known as the 80-20 blood sugar formula. And if you want to be part of that, you can apply to work with us. However, in order to qualify to work with us, you do have to watch a training first to make sure that what we teach would be useful for you. Because I don't want you coming in if this isn't going to be helpful, right? And so for free, you can go check out a kind of a sneak peek of what we teach in our programs right now. And this video is going to show you what we do, but also how we do it and what is different about our unique methodology that is revolutionizing diabetes management across the world. Doctors, endos, PAs, dietitians, strength trainers, Athletes have come through our program and uh, are spreading the word about it. So if you want to be part of that and jump in for yourself, see if you qualify, go to diabetesinaction.com. Uh, doors are probably going to close pretty shortly afterwards because we have some other fun announcements for you. Uh, I don't want you to miss this opportunity to get hands-on approach with your diabetes and get that sorted. All right. So if you found this useful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. Love hanging out with you guys, seeing the comments. And uh, if you have not yet, go check out that training. See if you qualify for our coaching. And I'll see you over there. All right, diabetesinaction.com. Have a fantastic day. And I'll catch you next week.
keep up the fight.